All right. Looks like it works. Uh, I've been monitoring the uh, LTE connection out here. and I've had a pretty consistent three bars. However, I am driving. So the risk is I might lose you, in which case the fates have designed, decided that this message is unworthy. <laughs> um, but if I do lose you guys for whatever reason, uh, I'll hop back on. But I'm driving out to Utah right now. I'm about halfway through the trip, left about 5 a.m. Uh, so that's where I'm headed. Uh, beautiful country out here, a lot of snow-capped mountains, um, led up to by a lot of dirt, which is kind of cool. Uh, so, big announcement. But before I get into the announcement, um, one, you guys can't hear me say something. Uh, again, I am driving, so I don't know how well this is going to hold up. Um, and two, before I get into the announcement, I kind of want to give a little bit of a, a framing of what's happening, why it's happening, uh, and, and what's kind of taken place over the last two and a half years since kind of starting this journey of Heroes Veritas, podcasting, speaking, coaching, helping people. I've had thousands of conversations in the last two and a half years. Uh, thank you. Um, I've heard th thousands of conversations. And the reality is most of them are political. Some of them are philosophical. Some are spiritual. But the overarching theme is that there's something wrong uh, with society. There's something wrong with today. There's something th wrong with the culture. Nobody seems to align with how things are going, how things are progressing, uh, the modern age, which is ironic um, in my mind because we are the modern age. We are the society. So as I continue these conversations with people, you know, philosophically, spiritually, politically, it always occurs to me that the people that they're talking about are themselves. And so if things are not going the way we want them to go and the, the majority of people that I talk to are pretty much on the same page, how is it that society isn't aligned to that? And it really comes down to perspective and lenses and, and, and what you're consuming and things of that nature. But I started this two and a half years ago to quote unquote reclaim masculinity shortly into that process, realize the arrogance of saying something that of that nature, but also um, becoming fully aware that that's a symptomatic approach. And as I've had these thousands of conversations with people, as I've engaged with people on numerous occasions, it became apparent that the number one issue that everybody has is thinking symptomatically. What I mean by that is we see an outcome, an issue, a thing, and we want to solve just that thing, but we don't want to backtrack a little bit further, dig a little bit deeper, get a little bit more vulnerable, a little bit more bare, and talk about what's the root cause and start attributing, focusing our energies on addressing the root cause. We just want to look at that symptom, that moment, that incident, that event, that issue. If we went politically, you can see this very heavily in gun control. Um, we have a mass shooting. We just had one uh, in Sacramento, where I'm from, uh, two days ago. Immediately, we got to ban guns. Well, you already did that. It's California. It's the strictest gun laws in the country. And it happened anyway. So your gun laws don't fucking work. So you think them, thinking symptomatically, reactively to something that is already not working and having a response of make it worse it doesn't help anybody. And that's pre predominantly the thinking that I've been experiencing as I've had these conversations is everybody wants to tell everybody how to live. They symptomatically want to address issues and say, you need to do X versus Y. You need to be this versus that. You need to be doing this versus that over there. And, and the reality is that offensive uh, approach to things makes people very uncomfortable. And I don't mean uncomfortable like, oh, I'm offended, I hate you, but uncomfortable in the sense of, all right, well, you just said that everything that I exist as is wrong, so there's no winning here. There's no conversation of understanding here. So I dug a little deeper and I started approaching conversations from 
a perspective of root cause analysis, RCAs. What, and I do this in IT, so this is where I got that terminology. What is actually causing the outcome that we're not liking? And it's culture. It's it's a hundred percent culture. The culture that we have in today's society is predominantly uh, a responsibility and accountability uh, dodging. It's it's a it's an attempt to avoid liability. So we built a culture around that. We've built a culture around uh, avoiding risk, being risk averse. We've built a culture around doing what's easy, not what's right. We've built a culture around. Um, doing what serves us most. I'm going to get mine, as I call it. I'm going to get mine. I don't care about nobody else. I'm going to get mine. And that culture perverts morality. It, 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 and what I mean by, I should say perverts, it subverts morality. Because then when you have a conflict, the I will always win out. So then I started having those conversations with people and those conversations led to different terminuses. I mean, they, they, they either led to a spiritual conversation of like, you can only have morality with God in your life. And I'm a, I'm a God fearing man. I love God. I'm very spiritual in that space, but you, you don't necessarily need God to be a moral human. I mean, that's been proven across the board. There's a lot of moral people out there that are atheists. So you have to like kind of find and define what spirituality means for you. And then you get to the political side. Well, all liberals are crazy. All conservatives are white supremacists. Okay, once again, we're, we're pigeonholing people, uh, you know, respectively uh, against uh, the larger whole. So we're, we're hyper fixating a large group of people um, from the extreme sides of things, from the extreme polars, and then we're applying it to everything, which then breeds this contempt for modern society. It breeds this need to disconnect and, and be your own entity, which subverts the the group of, uh, of constructs. And then down that same rabbit hole of political thought, you have the, the, the social architects. These are the people that will tell you that all of the U.S. is racist. They're the person, they're the people that will tell you all of one group is bad, all of the other group is bad, and they're trying to pit people against each other. Again, symptomatically approaching people an incident happens, then these people are all guilty. This this and that mindset, the if or that mindset is very difficult to have conversations of understanding with because it, it's, it's provocative. And it's not provocative for utility. It's provocative for views and ratings and podcasts and subscriptions. Okay, so that's how we get to my ideal of like culture needs to be addressed, but it can't be addressed in a this versus that statement in in, in generalizations, and it can't be broad spectrum, um, broad brush or stroked across everybody. So now we have that. So then you you start looking at okay, how do we get to that point where we're creating this this or that evil versus good kind of system of archa- archaic and draconian re- morality on? every level, culture, policies, or political, spiritual. And you look at education, you look at the education system. Uh, The education is not meant for free thinkers. The education system is meant to create group thought. It's, it's meant to create, uh, rifts. It's, it's designed to create, get in line, shave down square pegs to fit round holes, do what you're told or else it creates compliance. It's, it's what it's for. It's not for education necessarily. It's for indoctrination. And that that's proven, especially over the last two years, we've seen that. So now we have education and we have culture and I'm in the men's space and I'm, I'm helping men and I'm talking with men. I'm having thousands of conversation. And here's the rub for me is I'm on social media. I'm a very loose definition of the term influencer. I don't really like being associated with that criteria or construct. I, I also have my own spikiness and hurdles with being considered a coach, though I do coach and I do sell services as a coach. It's such a limited unilateral stru- structure that's very difficult for me in the way that I think, in the way that I help people to be pigeonholed into that. But you need to have something to define yourself against. You need to have something that people can seek you as. 
And so I went with coach and I specifically spoke with men because I don't really speak for ladies because I, that'd be arguing from ignorance. I don't know what it is to be a lady. I don't know what it takes to have menstrual cycles and children and, and all the hurdles of social pressures of being a female and all those things. So while all of my coaching that I give men also applies to women, I primarily niche down to men because I can speak from experience. But then that put me into a weird place too, because now I'm in this category of men's coaches. I'm in this category of masculinity. I'm in this category of the red pill, blue pill, gold pill. I don't fucking know. Um, groups. And they fall on very different polarities and spectrums, but they're very, they're very similar in their function. They're very, um, give men a place to, to, to connect and realize they're not alone and then maybe give them some tools to, to kind of build from that. Okay, cool. As a structure, I, I, I like it. I agree with it, but in two and a half years, the majority of the brotherhoods that I've seen, and I put a quotation on it because what they set out to do is be a, a, an audit system. They, they set out to set a standard of conduct and they set out to encourage and keep men accountable. And what they ultimately accomplish is a fucking sewing circle for dudes to go and bitch and piss and moan and pat each other on the back and circle jerk with each other about life and how society is so unfair to men. And they don't fucking go anywhere. For two and a half years, I've watched dudes do all this stuff where they don't, they don't go anywhere and they, they, they're in the same place. They're arguing about the same shit. They're, they're doing the same fucking thing. So I didn't want to make a brotherhood. I didn't want to divulge myself into this like construct of brotherhood. So then I'm like, okay, well, am I in the masculinity space at all? Do I want to be a men's coach at all? And ultimately what I found is that men's coaches fall into a number of categories, right? Much like the conversations I've had, it's been very much could be political, could be spiritual, could be ideological, could be uh, philosophical. And depending on where that spectrum lands and where how people interact with that spectrum, it changes the way that they approach themselves and, and, and define themselves as men, right? Like political groups that define themselves on an ideological So it makes it a little easier for you to, to create accountability there because it it allows for, uh, you know, uh, measurement points versus a more philosophical group. Um, these ones are ten, tend to be the ones that I, I see divulge or uh, devolve into bitching circles. Because they're asking large questions with no metrics assigned to it to actually give tactics to men to actually grow from it, right? Like, my wife doesn't listen to me. You're a king, bro. Be the leader of the house. You you should fucking do what you need to do. Self-respect, right? They use these large platitudes to give men a bolster and ego, but they don't teach them. They don't say, hey, this is how you communicate. This is how you approach this situation. This is the situation. A on the flip side, conversely, they also don't start a conversation in a way that allows them to ask the question of, hey, I'm going through this with my lady or my, my dude or my children or my boss. How do I handle this? How does this And, and, and don't bend a knee and do all these things. They're like, whoa, bro, that sounds pretty misogynistic. You can't fucking tell guys to do that, blah, 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 blah. On the flip side, I have women in my inbox going, holy fuck, I wish my man would do this. I wish this dude would do this. I wish men were, were more like this. So as I'm speaking, talking to men, more women are actually rising to it and going,
going fucking, yeah, like, let's fucking go. And more men are like, oh, I don't know if I could do that. And they're like shirking their responsibilities and avoiding accountability to making these growth points. So these three major issues, culture, education, and then this weird line of like more women aligning with being a warrior than men align with being a warrior because women can see themselves protecting their family and their children more than a man can see himself protecting their women and children. Like that blew my mind. Absolutely blew my mind. And so the last two and a half years have been this like constant evolution for me and plugging myself into the right places and talking to the right people and getting into an understanding. And a couple months ago now, I had this huge vision that just was like downloaded into my brain from some other spiritual plane. I swear to God, it just everything, all of it, all at once. There was no like iteration. It was just like, this is what you need to do. Here's the plans for the fucking arc. Go build it before the rain comes. So the massive conversation that's been very consistent over the last two years, two and a half years is, are we seeing the close of society? Are we seeing a a, uh, a a social downturn to the collapse of Western civilization. That, everybody's kind of up in arms in this panic and anxiety about, are we seeing the collapse of Western civilization? Are we seeing the collapse of the luxury and the decadence that we've experienced? Are we seeing the loss of freedoms? And the answer is yes, you are seeing that, Right. There's an overturn in society every couple decades. It's just the way it goes. You just have to know that it's coming and start preparing. So that brings me to the vision. That brings me to the announcement. I cannot stand just talking. I fucking hate it. I love talking. I'm a very articulated speaker. I love to talk. I love having deep conversations with people. But if all you're doing is circle jerking at a table, talking about your egos and clapping yourselves on the back and saying, we're fucking men because we're in a brotherhood and we're talking and we're doing all this shit, but you're not out fucking doing anything, you fucking drive me nuts. That's just the reality. Like, there's this really bad tendency that we have as men today in this like luxurious and decadent society that we believe that being on social media carries with it the risk of the arena. This isn't a real fucking place. There's no fear here. All your fear is manufactured in your mind and somehow grown ass men have determined for themselves and let society determine that being on social media and pontificating for hours on end is the same as being in the arena. It's the same as risk. It's the same as being a badass. Like, like it's not, I'm going to tell you right now, it's fucking not. You fucking pull up your phone, you record a video and you think you're fucking like taking on Goliath. You're fucking not dude. It's not that critical, which begs the question, how do you elicit change in a world? As an influencer, as I said earlier, like I am tantamount influencer because I get on, I post the cliches, I make my one liners, I fucking talk to people, I engage in conversation. We do a lot of physical or uh, philosophical discussion through social media, which is in, you know, no uncertain terms. And in Influencer. You post things that are nice and cliche and nice and put together and everything's pretty and it's there for the aesthetics. And I, and I like that. I'm an aesthetic guy. I like doing that stuff. It's fine. But if it stops there, if that's all you do, if all you do is get on social media and you believe that that's the, that's the, your legacy, that's where you're going to, that's where you're going to leave it all in the arena. And you're, that's where you're going to bleed is in this false reality of, you know, VR, the metaverse, social media, Twitter because you fucking had a, a quid pro quo with people about some argument point and you went back and forth and it got so many retweets like that's not the arena dude like I'm I'm not I'm not sorry to tell you like that is not the arena so I'm thinking how do I how do I get the philosophical discussions out of this fucking box this magical 
false reality that people uh, attach themselves to and put it into the real world and get it to a place where it will actually function, where it will actually do good in the world. And so that vision, that, that growth point is an education system where we build the culture and we build the education. So that's the announcement over the next two to five years, depending on how long it takes us to get funded and and get it all ready up and running. We are going to create, and I've already started building my team, the Heroes Veritas system. It's an ecosystem and it teaches creative grave education, leveraging hands-on real world experience from real world teachers that will actually give you the confidence to take the data that we tell you and teach you and apply it to your life. There's plenty of things out there that you can pay for conferences and, and, and masterminds and online courses. And all they do is they talk at you. They just talk at you. And it's no different than Instagram. You get that same fucking experience on YouTube. It's a single sided conversation where they go, this is what you need to know. I'm not going to give you any of the personal one-to-one application information, but this will teach you how to do it. And the education piece of that is that's what we know because that's what we've been taught for 18 plus years of schooling is just have somebody at the front of the class. You're taking notes, no hands-on training, and you're just, you're getting talked at. We're going to completely revolutionize that. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to take it down to hands-on training. Action is going to be the number one core of that education system because humans are kinetic. We're not meant to be sitting in a classroom for eight hours a fucking day. So it's going to be kinetic. It's going to be based on real world hands-on experience and actually trial and error and doing it while on site. It's going to be built around culture. Like I was talking about earlier, culture is a big problem. So it's going to be based on the culture that we develop as a tribe, uh, as a Heroes Veritas tribe, functional culture. One of the number one issues that I see with a lot of guys that seek culture philosophically is they romanticize the past and they don't know how to reconcile the past with with the present. And so, you know, you see this with guys that are like, oh, I'm a three percenter from 1776. I'm a Spartan. I'm a Roman legionnaire. Uh, I'm a Viking. That's escapism. That's not culture. You're not that that culture no longer exists. So how do you reconcile those principles that you align to and you like into the new world, into the progressive world? And we're going to do that as well. We're going to build a system around that. The culture will be experienced throughout the whole system. So hands-on action, culture, and then you're going to have actual training while you're there on how that applies to your life, how you actually implement it, what conversations you actually have to have. And this is going to be a single place. This is going to be a large property, uh, and it's going to be a convergence point of training and culture for people to learn the way that humans are neurologically developed to learn not sitting in a classroom for eight hours. You're going to have academic pieces. You're going to have theoretical pieces that you can learn from, but you're going to have hands-on physical work that you're going to use to speed up adoption, increase confidence so that when you walk home or go home or whatever, and you leave our facility, you know, for a fact, for a fact, it's not a question in your mind. There is a fact that you can implement everything we teach you. And the big thing that this is a big shift for me, at least is This is going to be families. This isn't going to be men only. This is men, women, their children, whole families. We're going to have family events. We're going to have one-on-one men only events, women only events, co-ed events. And it's going to cover topics that follow what I believe is necessary for all adults, which is protecting, providing, and leading. So everything that is required for you to, and I call it cradle to grave education, everything for you to go from childhood to leading your own family to the grave and how to lead your family to do the same thing so that we could perpetuate a culture of, of systemic high value morality, high value education, high utilitarian skill sets. And we get rid of, as a byproduct, the symptoms of depression and anxiety and doubts and fears. And those are byproducts of lack of skill set, lack of utility, lack of culture, lack of identity. By building that into the system, we 
we, we no longer approach it symptomatically of giving you pills for those things. My goal would be that these things would give somebody enough identity in themselves and self-respect that those things, while may be present, will be lessened and they'll be able to manage their life a lot better. And so that's the huge announcement. And I know I, I took a long time to get to that because I really wanted to to take you on this journey with me of, of, of how I got to that point. It wasn't just like, I don't know if I can open an education and put a big piece of plot of land there. There was a, there was a lot of thought in the last two and a half years, a lot of interaction, a lot of engagement. So over the next, you know, two to five years, depending on how long it takes me to get this up and running and, and get the right players in, in, in play and, um, you know, get the property set up. Um, this isn't a small undertaking. I'm not talking about a fucking building in a fucking strip mall. I'm talking 400 to 600 acres built out for the sole purpose of training and education with all the amenities and facilities that are required to take you from doubts and concerns of how I'm going to lead my family, how I'm going to do these things all the way through. I'm a fucking, I'm a king, I'm a queen, and I'm going to fucking wreck this world. And I'm here to build big shit. It includes shooting range, gym, our headquarters, uh, uh, our headquarters, it's going to include, uh, lodging. So you'll be able to, um, you'll be able to stay on site and fully immerse yourself in the experience and in the education. Um, we're going to offer everything from cooking classes to, you know, night ops, tactical training. Um, obviously not right out the gate. This will be an iterative process. Um, we'll have a lot of free workshops for families and, and mothers and, and fathers, uh, especially because families, the most important thing to me, I think family is extremely, incredibly important. Um, and so as we go through this process, we're going to offer more and more and we're going to build out this, this system. Um, I've already brought a couple people on board that are super amped to help me out and, and we're moving forward on these things. Uh, and the, the ultimate goal of this is to make a huge impact in the history of the world. Um, and I need your guys' help with that. I'm going to need you guys' uh, input. I'm going to need you guys' interaction because the reality is there's something wrong and we all feel it. The world is hollow. The substance we once had, and I'm not just talking about our country. I'm talking about the world. If you look around, you look around the last two and a half years, there's something missing and, and it looks full. But it's like Swiss cheese. It, it looks solid, but it, it's just filled with holes. And systematically, I want to start filling those holes, those gaps in culture and identity and society so that people don't have to feel behind the eight ball anymore. So that a man doesn't become a father without proper role model and leadership. So that women do not become mothers without support and, and children do not get raised without self-respect and confidence and capacity and we return to a place where humans uh, build great shit because we've lost that. We've lost that. We've gotten instead to a place where we've spent the better part of the last three generations in school being told that we have to ask permission to build. We have to ask permission to do what we need to do. We have to ask permission to lead our family. Fuck, government right now believes that they get to teach your children. And I'm against that. I believe that families get to teach their children. And so in my effort to take myself out of the virtual and place myself in the actual arena, take myself out of the, the category of influencer, I want to build something bigger. I want to build something that will actually change the history of the world. I want to actually build something that's going to leave a legacy of high value morality, high value utility, and bring you guys all along for that journey because this is not going to be a small undertaking. And when I do this, cause I'm going to do this when this succeeds and when this is something that is utilized worldwide, when this is something that is implemented in millions of families worldwide, when this changes the culture to something better, when it becomes more wholesome, when it becomes more full, that will be all the proof the world will need that big things can be done from random fucking people like me. I grew up in the hood. I grew up from nothing. I was broke. I 
you can do it. And this is, this is going to be my legacy. This is going to be what I'm, I'm doing. And so I wanted to bring you guys along for that journey. And, uh, as we get closer and as we, you know, everything's going to be out on my social media, my team will have it out on their social medias as well. Whenever we break ground, when we're out looking and surveying land, when we're, you know, building out the facilities, when our workshops are in, when our classes are going to be on, there'll be an online module piece too. Like, this is not going to be some amateur hour bullshit where we're like, oh yeah, we're going to teach you and, you know, learn how to be a coach in six weeks. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to bring gravitas back to humans, bring the weight of our, of our responsibility as, as, as custodians of this planet back to where it was because we've, we've lost sight of our custodial responsibility of this world. Um, it, we are we are denizens and custodians of this world, which means that we have to not only live here, but we have to leave it better than we found it. And we've lost sight of that. And there's a there's a huge culture and shift towards this selfish. Um, I'm gonna get mine. I'm gonna do what I want to do, and I don't agree with that. I don't put stock in it. I I believe that humans innately are better. I believe that they're more capable. And I look forward to sharing that with you guys and seeing you guys out at the, at the location, at the ranch or compound or whatever you call it, um, to learn from us and to build with us and to grow with us and become a tribe of just absolute high moral, high value warriors that just fucking change the entire course of history um, as we know it. And I'm looking forward to sharing that experience with all of you. So that was my announcement. Um, I think I ranted quite a bit, but but I digress. But I hope you guys join me. If you're watching this after, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Tell me I'm off my rocker. It gives me, it gives me, when people tell me I'm crazy, I like it. So 